Hi there, this is Rich Saunders, and this is a setup for Co-op the Co-op Game. Right now, our, um, our order's on shipping to us, or will be shipping to us as of January 31st, and uh, we wanted to show you guys how to set up the game once you get it. The instruction book has all the setup you need in here. It goes through steps A through M, and you can follow along in the instruction book while we do this if you want. But of course, as you know, um, it's a lot easier sometimes when someone shows you how to do something rather than reading through you know, three pages of instructions of how to set up the game, okay? This is a small instruction book, so. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So um, the go ahead and follow along in your instruction book if you like, because the letters we do correspond to steps in the instruction book. So we start off, with the first thing is you want to choose a scenario. So pick a scenario. Since this is probably your first time playing, because you're watching a setup chart, you'll want to choose the Mondomar Takeover. This is the, uh, the base game, basically where you try to be groovy and awesome and make it to $10 by the end of the game, okay? Um, always to make sure you check the setup. There's um, a lot of times the scenarios may change the setup a little bit. Right now we're going to just show you setup for uh, the Monomart Takeover scenario. And then they also show you the win conditions. Now there, there should be three scenario cards, two if you don't have the Kickstarter exclusive, and they, they're both double-sided. So for example, the vacation card really changes the setup by putting a whole bunch of card um, goods cards in the warehouse and storefront. But we're going to start with Operation Monomar Takeover, okay? So this is step A. It's a card, so if you really wanted to, you could share it among your friends, but we'll put it over here, up at the top here, so everyone, it's in view of everybody, okay? So now let's go to step B. Step B is we want to build the Cooperate Action Area, okay? The Cooperate Action Area, there's a card here. The whole purpose of it, to show where the Cooperate air, uh, Action Area is, goes up here, and the first three Cooperate Actions, these are the three Cooperate Actions used in your first couple of games, are the warehouse run, the car wash, and the drum circle. And these go up here in the cooperate action area. Okay? There are other cooperate actions uh, in the game, but for the first few games you want to go with these. Okay, so that's step B. Now step C is you want to place the money chart. Depending on the number of players, you either want the one to three side, that's this side where you start at minus ten dollars, or you want the side that starts at minus thirteen dollars for four to five players. I'm gonna set up a game for a two player easy game. So we're going to go ahead and use this side, okay, and then we're going to put the uh, marker about where we're starting at minus ten dollars up here, okay. So you'll notice as we go through uh, setting up the game, the game's going to build down like this. So we're starting at the top and building down mostly, okay. All right, so the next step is we're going to build the calendar, okay. So the calendar uh, represents where we uh, where we are in the week, and it's very important because on uh, the weekend, when you get to the end of Friday, that's when you're able to move goods from the storefront to the warehouse. Now, when you set up the calendar, you obviously put it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Make sure, at least for the first couple of games, that you don't use these. These are the advanced cards. Notice the little karma symbol up here. This makes the game a little bit harder, more stuff to deal with, and the first time you're playing the game, there's a lot of stuff going on. So you just want to play with the basic calendar first. So you set up um, Monday through Friday up here at the top, and what's going to happen is every day a happenings card comes out, and you put it on the calendar. So you'll, uh, when you put a card out on the calendar, um, it goes right here where the back of the happenings card is. So you'll go Monday through Friday, and the game basically will remind you where you are in the week depending on where the most recent calendar game is, okay? So that is the calendar. The next step is step E, place your location cards. Okay, so there's four locations. They're all marked with a closed sign on the back. Uh, there's the storefront, the yoga studio, the park, and the warehouse. Now the warehouse goes uh, way across town. Imagine that your warehouse is way across town uh, where the land is cheap across the bridge. So you can store stuff. This, the warehouse is where you're gonna store goods where they don't fit in your storefront. Your storefront is the main, uh, main hub of the game. This is where uh, Customers are going to come and buy stuff from you, and then I'll go up here close to where the players are. Remember, the players are going to be sitting over here, and you want them to be able to get to these three locations very easily. What's going to happen usually on a turn is you're going to place your marker uh, on one of the locations to signify that you've gone there. So put the locations down here close to the players. Remember, the players are sitting here. Okay? So the next step is to find and shuffle the goods cards. Okay? So we'll take these, give them a quick shuffle, okay? Now, the step F also has one other part of the step, consult your rule book. Depending on whether you're playing an easy, intermediate, or hard game, the number of goods changes that goes into the storefront of the warehouse. So there's a little chart you can consult in your book. Um, 
for us, since we're playing e a two-player easy game, we get us three goods in the storefront and five goods are going to go to the warehouse. And that's the next two steps. Steps H, you place goods in the warehouse. Oops, I should do G first, huh? I should know my alphabet. <laughs> G, we place goods in the warehouse. Uh, pardon me, the storefront. Holy cow. So the storefront, we get three cards. One, two, three. So here's your three goods cards. And then step H, we place goods in the warehouse. Okay? Now, you'll notice here that we can see everything that's on them. And it's really easy to see this is music, this is edible, uh, this is fair trade knick-knack as, um, as your type of goods. But you kind of might be running out of room over here. So these, uh, these cards are made so that if you want to, you can stack them up like this. And see in the upper left-hand corner, you can still see what everything is. You can see that the bell bottoms are free trade and they're knick-knack. You can see that the recycled crayons are edible and organic. Yes, they're edible crayons. And the artisanal grapefruit is edible and organic as well. So you can go ahead and put those up here. Since you might be running out of board space, you can put them up like that. So you can still see what they are, but they fit over here nicely in the warehouse. Okay? Okay. And then finally, uh, when you're done with that, let's see, we're at GH. Uh, you take the goods cards over here and put them over here so people can get to them. All right. So that was steps G and H. Now let's go to step I. I is where we take our character sheets and standees and set them up down here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and choose two simple characters, uh, Cherry Put Jones and Henry Hall. Uh, usually when you're choosing your characters, you want to choose at least one hippie and one, uh, sorry, one busy and one hippie. Okay, and then put your uh, characters up here like so. Okay, so that's step, uh, that was step I. Okay, let's go to step J now. Step J is you take your vibe tokens and put them on jury. So Henry Hall gets a vibe token on jury, and Cherry Pitt Jones would get it on jury, but since his special ability is never bummed, he doesn't even have jury. So that's step J. After step J is step K. Okay. Step K is where we get our grooves cards, okay, and set ourselves up. So we take our grooves cards. Shuffle them up a little bit, and you'll notice that when we get the group cards, we hand them out, and the hand limit is five for the game. So whenever you get more than five cards, you have to discard at the end of your turn. So we'll give each character five cards. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And then when um, we do step L, which is we take and set up the groove deck over here, someplace where everybody can get to it. Okay? Okay, let me kind of straighten these out just a little bit. Okay. All right, so if you imagine playing, this is there's one character over here, one player over here, and down here are the grooves cards. Uh, the groove cards are public knowledge, that's why they're face up, so everyone can coordinate together and figure out what's the best thing to do on a turn. Okay, now we get to step M. This is probably the most complicated part of the game and often misunderstood, so I want to go through it. We're going to build the happenings deck. All right, so this every day a happening card comes out and sets the theme of a game. For example, some two guys have an argument and people lose vibe. Um, uh, the refrigerator breaks and we lose all of our goods except the music and the hick knack knack. And so something bad most of the time happens every day. And so this sets, these are the set of challenges we have to defeat as the game goes on. This also counts how many days until the Mondemart takeover happens. You know, there's down at the city, there's a deadline and if we don't, have everything set up by the deadline, then we lose the game. So what you want to do is to go through your happenings deck and find the game over card. Now it's double sided, so it's really easy to find inside the happenings deck. This kind of, when this card comes out, that's going to represent obviously the end of the game and you have one more day to do some stuff. All right. So to set up the happenings deck, what you want to do is figure out um, how many cards you want. Now you can go ahead and consult your rule book here and you'll see that um, Depending on the number of players, you want a different number of happenings cards, and also whether you're easy, uh, medium, or hard. So for us, we're going to set up a two-player easy game. So two players means we get 14 happenings cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay? And we're going to play an easy game, which gives us an extra two. If we played intermediate, we'd have to stay at 14. If we played a hard game, we'd actually have to take one away. But we'll just go ahead and do an easy game. So that gives us 16 happening cards. We take these. 
we put the game un over card underneath them, and then we put this on top of the rest of the cards. So this forms our happening stick. Now notice that we put the game over sort of offset. We always want to see when the game over happens. It's not hidden information. We know when our deadline is. Whoop! We know when our deadline is. So we want to be able to get to that point. So we go ahead and put those here. And that is now the happening step. That is all a step for step M. Basically, we're setting up how many days until the game over card comes out. And finally, step N, we find the happening dude or dudette. Usually it's the person who most recently shopped at a hippie store or a co-op. So if you stopped at Trader Joe's recently, you're probably going to be the happening dude. And that's all you need for the setup. This shows how everything puts together. Um, next, in our next video, we'll show you how to play from this century. So we're going to switch sides from the camera and play a few rounds to show you how the game goes. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoy.